Thanks to the supporters of channel member Jonathan Comba. Don't worry, boys and girls, I have a solution to the wobbly camera that has been all over the videos since I got my sit stand desk. In the meantime, the solution is to not touch the desk while I'm doing these intros. So I'm just going to do it with my hands on my head and it'll be fine because as soon as I put my hands on the table, everything starts wobbling again. Solution is incoming though, soon. Hello and welcome to Club 4, part 51 of non to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have both legs of our Champions League quarterfinal against Leipzig. Since you were last with me, we have squeezed in a couple more games, um, including smashing Bournemouth 6-0, which did wonders for the goal difference gap between us and Manchester City. And then we ruined all that good work by dropping points away against Southampton. So the Premier League table looks like this. We have now gifted City a four-point lead at the top of the table. Close the goal difference gap down a little bit. We do still have City to play, but we've only six games left and, and also a match in there against Manchester United. The Premier League might be done, especially because Manchester City are only focusing on the Premier League. They don't need to worry about the Champions League this year because they're rubbish and got knocked out of it. So our full focus is on the Champions League. It does mean the Manchester United game will be played off-camera and with a rotated team so that we can stay as strong as possible for Leipzig, unless we lose like 5-0 in this first leg. As long as we've got a chance of the semi-final after this first leg, we're going to effectively concede the Premier League title and gift Manchester United some points and in turn Manchester City, the Premier League, Man United by the way, are down in 11th place, so maybe it won't be too bad playing a rotated team against them. Um, but all that being said, this is the team that we're going to be sending to Germany to try and beat Leipzig. We've got Hoy and Hall in goal, a back four of Aranua, Mura, Dinamarco and Fernandes. Dinamarco, by the way, has now made his Brazil debut ahead of Caio Cesar. So I have been justified this season in uh, in playing him in the starting 11. Obviously, he was always going to be the better defender. I always knew. Navarro in, in the base of the midfield with Tonali and Tipple ahead of him, then Bindi in behind Pedro Luis and Delgado. In injury to Schultz is why Bindi is playing um, in that role, Schultz is going to be out for the next couple of weeks, so we'll miss both legs. Paviot suspended after being sent off in the. I think he was sent off in the quarter in the in the knockout round. Am I am I right? Was he sent off or was it? Yeah, no, he was sent off in the Premier League, so it must just be an accumulation of yellows, which is why he's suspended for this one. So it should just be suspended for the first leg, and then we can uh, get back to normal with Fernandez in the middle. Fingers crossed for that second leg. Tonali once again playing in central midfield. For all the reasons I explained to you yesterday, it, it, it is at times a bit like carrying a passenger in there physically because he doesn't have a lot in the way of physicals, but more than makes up for that with his experience and that scintillating long passing that he's got in his wheelhouse. And I think between Navarro, Tipple and Fernandez and Bindi, the four players who are kind of surrounding him, I think they're all capable of doing his running for him. And we just need to get him the ball in positions like that and let him do something special. So again, let's get the ball to Tonali. We probably should have him marked as a playmaker. We're not going to, though. You know how we do things around here. Uh, Navarro to Bindi and back to Navarro again. Look at the little pocket of space that, that we've got Tonali in. Just give him the ball and let him do something magical with it. And while everyone's worrying about the ball going to Tonali, including me, Marco Bindi is just going to thunder it in under the goalkeeper from the edge of the area. Only 11 minutes gone, and it's Leipzig nil, Norwich 1. I love the fact that we're going to have to keep coming back to Germany as part of our Champions League winning conquest this season. Just keep showing them, look, look how good I am. Look, Germany, look how good I am. Dortmund watching on, having not even qualified for the Champions League this year. They're like, yeah, that's the kind of man I want to give the job to. Let's sack Brendan Rodgers. And give old Kev the job here at Dortmund. Won't that be super duper sweet? That's what I'm hoping they're thinking. That pro probably is exactly what their thought process is. So 1-0 up. Midway through this first half, Fernandez has got himself caught in no man's land a little bit there between uh, chasing the ball and following his player and ended up not really doing either. Uh, has got back to recover because Leipzig... Took a little bit too long to capitalise on Fernandes being out of position, but they are in here. And talking of positioning, Hoyenhau was a little bit off there, but got away with it because of his excellent shot stopping. Remains 1-0. We've been the better team so far, you could argue. 
I mean, Leipzig are ahead on XG, but since when did we ever pay any attention to XG on this channel? Exactly. XG is irrelevant. All we care about is whatever we're ahead in at the time. That's all that's relevant. Delgado then, chasing clear. Um, He's got options. Bindi and I think it was Tipple were both up waiting for a waiting for ball. I don't know where Pedro Luis was in all of that, hovering back doing Pedro Luis things. Now, Aaron Ur has come very narrow here to just run at the defence, and it's popped free to Pedro Luis, and that's why we didn't see him before, because he was just busy losing markers, so that when the ball eventually did get to him, he could be in space. He might have been in so much space because he was offside. We'll reserve judgment just for a second. He wasn't offside. He was just being a genius of movement. There, look, no one knows who's picking him up. Who's picking him up? No one knows. Who's picking him up? No one knows. He's on the right back by the time he gets the ball, and because of that, he gets all the time he needs to tuck it past the goalkeeper. We're 2-0 up, and this is going better than I could have hoped for as an away leg in a Champions League quarterfinal. Checking in on the other Champions League quarterfinals at the moment, Leverkusen nil, Bayern nil. Hertha Berlin are 1-0 up away from home against PSG, which is a potentially massive result. Um, I forget who we'd get in the semi-final. I think it is the winner of that game if we get through this match. So I'd much rather take on her to Berlin than Paris Saint-Germain. That's for sure. So it would be quite nice to have to beat three German teams on the way and then go and live in Germany again afterwards. It'd be like, oh, everyone here already hates me. Excellent. Which is setting things up nicely for the continuation of the story. Um, right. What are we going to do? Tanali has done his work for today. We need to get him off. Shuffle the midfield back around again. Get Shepard in behind the front too. Aaron Ua is also tired. Uh, so Mura can go and play left back. Caesar can come on and play in there. And then for my final change, Janasek on for Bindi. We have got lovely strength and depth in this squad now. The fact that we're a midfielder down and we've still got Shepard and Janasek to come off the bench in a situation like this is people's, people questioning in the summer whether we'd actually upgraded the squad or not. The fact I was able to make that change, even though we were already starting a man down in midfield, that's your proof that this team has stepped on another level. We've had strength in depth. We we fixed the attack first, then we fixed the defence, and now we've got the strength in depth we need in midfield. And now we've got a solid 22 players who can all play in the Champions League. I've got confidence in all of them. They're just interchangeable, a lot of these players. And that's why this is the year we're going to go and win the big one. Shepard to Delgado, who must have been offside because he was literally stood off the pitch as he received the ball. And uh, I don't think it's been given as offside because what's the point? The goalkeeper has the ball in his hands and is uh, looking to distribute. But luckily, Murrah is there to intercept. Now, Pedro Luis nods down to Shepard. Delgado's in here. A third would be massive. Um, and Delgado hits the base of the post. That was a big, big moment. 3-0 up from the first leg. And you start to feel really very confident Going into that second leg, we'd potentially, if we'd have gone 3-0 up, probably would have uh, played a strong team against Manchester United and tried to win the Premier League, knowing that the job was done here at 2-0. I don't think the job is done done, so we don't want to be tiring the boys out too much. And at 2-1, if they grab a goal back here, the job is definitely not done. But Shepard, with the breakaway, if he can release Delgado, who's drifted offside again, and Navarro, Janacek now. Just shoot. We've seen him score from here before and he's done it again. Milan Janacek makes it 3-0 on 87 minutes. And like I said, I think that is as close as you're going to get to job done on this first leg. And now I've got a decision to make about what we do against Manchester United because we play the second leg against Leipzig midweek next week. And in between the two, we've got Manchester United at the weekend. I would obviously like to win both football matches. But we're starting the one against Leipzig at home with a three-goal head start against a team we've just comfortably outplayed. Where Manchester United a lower mid-table. I want to win both. I want to win the Champions League more. I think we prioritise the Champions League and also make note of the fact that Hoyenhal made nine saves in that match. So... It could have gone very differently. Maybe we weren't as dominant as the 3-0 scoreline suggests. Scoreline? Yeah. I mean, that's the combination. <laughs> that's a new thing. The combination between the score and the and the storyline. 3-0 scoreline, eh? That, I mean, that's the definition of my entire body of work. It's all scorylines. 
I'm going to copyright. I need to write that down. That's I've just coined a phrase. The scorey line. Let's go do that second leg. Well, we really do have to win the Champions League now. We basically gifted the Premier League to Manchester City. We did play a rotated side. I chickened out. And we even missed a penalty. And uh, yeah, we didn't beat Manchester United despite them being down in mid-table. So this is what the Premier League table now looks like. City six points clear with five games remaining and 12 extra goals over us. They play Tottenham now, who are in fourth place, knowing that I win and they're just about there. Um, I haven't seen the run-in yet to see who else they're going to play, but the fact that we've still got to play them, and even if we beat them, they'll still be three points ahead of us, unless they're dropping points somewhere else, or they play Manchester United after us. Or maybe it's not over. Let's not worry about it. Let's worry about the Champions League. 3-0 up from the first leg. The only change from the team from the first leg is Paviot does come back in at right back, so Fernandez can move back over to centre-back to partner Mura. Um, but other than that, that is the same team that played and won 3-0 in Germany. So fingers crossed. We should be relatively comfortable here. And um, we're obviously going to be keeping an eye on the other Champions League games as well. As much as I'd like to know what's going on with Manchester City, I think the Champions League is more important. We made that decision with the team selection against Manchester United. And Fernandez has just gifted them a goal. Five minutes on the clock. That is not the start we had in mind. They've got a 30-goal striker who has now scored against us because he was just given a goal. I mean, that is so poor from Fernandez, And even Hoy and Hal not able to keep that one out. If we manage to throw this away here, having just deliberately thrown the Premier League away, I'll level with your boys and girls. I'll be quite cross about it. Uh, Paviot is in behind, plays it across to Delgado. He needs to be firing today. It's no good him scoring all his goals against the likes of Bournemouth and Southampton, or whoever it was he got a hat-trick against recently. I think it was Southampton, not Bournemouth. He needs to start turning up in these big games. Schmidt is in again for them, and luckily, Hoy and Hal, as he often does if there's an early goal against him, Hoy and Hal has decided there's going to be no more of that nonsense today. I've got the floppy bit of hair again. It's, it's the story of this season, really, the floppy bit of hair. Will you give yourself a haircut, Kev? This weekend, I'll give myself a haircut. Promise. Corner. Headed clear by Tipple, who just gets everywhere. What a man Tipple is. Um, but it is still Leipzig on the attack. They seem up for this. I think we should probably drop a little bit of encouragement. I'm always a little bit wary of um, of touchline shouts when you're in the second leg and you're comfortably ahead. Because if this was a normal match, obviously we encourage here. But does the game think we're 3-1 up or 1-0 down? Because encouraging might seem a bit odd. It doesn't matter, though. Pedro Luis has scored. I think it's probably being disallowed. I say it doesn't matter. Offside would surprise me. There were two Leipzig players who fell over. I thought it would be for a foul. I don't see how... Pedro Luis is certainly not offside. And the goal has been awarded. Excellent. Let's look at this from the other angle. So you get the two guys who fall down over here because they both slide in on Aaron and get nowhere near him. Cross comes in. Delgado plays it back to Pedro Luis. The only question would have been was Delgado offside, I guess. But he wasn't because Aaron has practically at the uh, practically at the line there before he's pulling it back. And then Delgado himself is playing it backwards as well. That goal is massive. We didn't celebrate it as much as we could because we weren't sure it counted. But 4-1 now on aggregate. We've leveled things up for tonight. And Pedro Luis, as ever, he turns up for the big games. He's the real hero here. Delgado might be the best player in the world. The best player in Norwich he is and always has been Pedro Luis. What a pass! Aaron Ur is in again here. Crosses to the man himself again. Pedro Luis, 21st goal of the season, puts us 2 1 up. His first year playing as this deeper striker, I was a little bit worried we'd taken away his goal threat. And it didn't really matter because he was creating a lot and Schultz was scoring loads of goals. And yeah, let's not worry too much about Pedro Luis. There was even talk when we signed Sioni in the summer that Pedro Luis might lose his spot as the summer went on. Not from me, but from some of you lot in the comments. Some of you speculated Pedro Luis might lose his starting spot. But as this season has gone on and Schultz has had a really poor season, it's something probably worth monitoring why Schultz has been so off the pace this year after being so good last year. Uh, but Pedro Luis is just getting better and better and better. And 21 goals now playing as that deep, deeper striker. He has just become a complete forward. And 
we couldn't be without him. He is an absolute superstar. And if there was a way to track in game who his goals were against, I dare say, based on my own observations, that Pedro Luis has more goals in big games against tough opposition than Delgado has. Delgado does suffer a little bit from padding your numbers against the rubbish itis, which is an official football manager syndrome, I think. Right, Fernandez to Tonali. And now Pedro Luis playing Tipple in a third here. And we're done again. We were already done in the first leg. We want to be done again for tonight. We want to be able to start resting the boys, thinking ahead to a semi final. We've not even had a look to see what's going on in the other quarterfinals. I still haven't checked who we play. And these two have messed up a short corner again. Right, Bayern and Leverkusen, nil nil. I feel like that was nil nil in the first leg as well. So that's that's quite a tight one. Is that who we play? Nobody remembers. You probably remember. Hertha and PSG 1 1. I don't know what the scores were in the first leg. I would quite like the aggregate scores to be on the latest score thing. That seems to be an oversight that Football Manager could fix. But FM23, please add that to my list of requested features. Delgado's in. And again, in a big match with an easy opportunity, he fluffs his lines. It happens far too often from Delgado. Oh, I get cross with him. If we were to do another season at Norwich, which I'm pretty sure we're not going to, and we had to sell one of them, I think I'd rather sell Delgado and keep Pedro Luis around. Pedro Luis is a proper big game player. Delgado, not so much. Watch him get a hat-trick in the final now, and that's fine. I'll love him forever for it. Pedro Luis, out to Aranua. Again, pulling all the strings, Pedro Luis. Delgado's in, and his header is collected by the goalkeeper. Still 2-1, 5-1 on aggregate. And uh, we could, I, I would really just like a final nerve settler. And then we can focus in on what's going on in the other matches and try and work out who we might be playing. I don't even know which one of the three matches is going to feed us our opposition. So the speculation will be uh, will be pretty speculative. Uh, ball over the top for Delgado to chase. One thing he has got is exceptional pace. He's shown it again there. Cross comes in. What a cross it is as well. And Pedro Luis has his hat trick. He's turned up in one of the biggest games we've ever had and grabbed himself a hat trick. Let's not ignore the fact that Delgado has created a couple of them as well. Um, his pass for the first goal and um, this stunning cross for the second. They are just an excellent partnership. You don't want to split them up. They're brilliant together. And it is now 3-1, 6-1 on aggregate. Bayern have gone ahead against Leverkusen. PSG are ahead against Hertha. I haven't seen what's going on in the third match, which I think involves Benfica and someone. Would it be another German team? How many German teams have we covered so far? I feel like there's a lot of German teams in this. Um, right, Navarro, crunching tackle from him. That's why he plays in the crunching position. And now Delgado is in. He'll grab his goal here because it doesn't matter anymore. He's missed it again. What is going on with that boy? He isn't coming off. He's staying on the pitch until he scores a goal. A few of the others can have a little bit of a rest. But Delgado stays out there because this is becoming absurd now from him. The amount of chances that he's missing. It's almost to the point where you swap the two of them around. And just say to Pedro Elise, you're our goal scorer now. Let Delgado set you up. But the only problem with doing that is they work so well this way around. I don't want to mess with things. They've got 50 plus goals between them playing in this system. Now is not the time to experiment with other versions of how it might work even better. Janicek with the free kick. And uh, it doesn't get anywhere near a yellow shirt. It doesn't really matter because this, as I already mentioned, job is already done, and Pedro Luis nearly added a fourth with an excellent effort from the edge of the area. Delgado just knows when he's not playing well, just give it to Pedro Luis and let him do the business. And he definitely did the business there. Champions League semi-final for the second year in a row. But who do we play? Who do we play? Uh, Paviot's broken his ankle. That's not ideal. Our World Cup winner is not going to be a Champions League winner this season. And we play Paris Saint-Germain. I mean, it's ne it was never going to be easy, was it? We've got our budgets. We don't need to worry so much about them because we'll be gone, I think. How did Manchester City get on against Tottenham? Presumably they beat them. Yeah, nine points clear. The Premier League is over and done with, but we don't care 
because it's all about the Champions League. So I'm probably not even going to show you the Manchester City game tomorrow. We'll just do both legs of the semi-final against PSG. And uh, fingers crossed, book a spot in the Champions League final against either Bayern Munich or Inter Milan. It's Europe's big four there, boys and girls. And it's the top team from each of the four biggest nations. Spain probably won a word um, with, with France specifically. But let's ignore that. Lovely stuff. If you look, hands off the table again. No wobbling. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily football manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.